So I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quick value study. Um, the first thing we're gonna be doing is making your value scale. Um, so I've got a see-through ruler for this. I'm gonna bring it from about seven inches and sort of just trace the whole thing out rather than do this twice and then close it off here. So ideally you wanna make each of these probably about an inch or so because we wanna show seven different values here. I'm just gonna close them off. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is just to show the differences in value here. Okay, and then our goal is gonna to be to get a complete value um, change with seven different versions of that. So the first one is going to be your darkest color. I'm just using a number two pencil. If you have drawing pencils, that's great. You can use an even darker lead. I'm gonna clean up the edges here when I'm done. And notice I'm going back and forth both ways. So by doing that, it helps get rid of that scratchy mark that the pencil can create. And I'm not pressing down like super hard because I don't want to scratch the paper. I'm just pressing enough to get a good layer of lead on there. And then I'm going to be using um, Tortillon and Blending Stump. So you can use either of these. Let's start with the Blending Stump here. Just using this to get a nice clean finish, get rid of all the paper, smooth things out. This is also going to pick up some of the lead for me. I'm actually going to be using this lead that I picked up from here to do another shade. So I'm burnishing this into the paper using the blending stump. So I picked this one, my last one's gonna be white, so that'll be my lightest. And this one I want to be actually lighter than that, so that's why I picked uh, the third spot there. All right, let's go into the next. I want this to be a lighter version. Remember, we've gotta squeeze three different values into here. So let's sort of just see what this looks like once we get and burnishing into it. I may actually have to bump this one darker a little bit just so we can make sure we get enough variations. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go through, let's do sort of all of these at once. I'm trying to make a gradation change like that. It's sort of easier to work on all three at the same time. can see a change between that and that. And now we need to add some layers into these two. We're adding another layer on both. All right, so that should be enough to bring out this middle layer here. We've got a difference between each of those, which means this is the last one we'll have to work on here. Okay, and then our second to last one, I'm just gonna lightly pull up some of this with my finger. Just lightly blend it in. And notice it's a lot less pigment than what the uh, burnishing of the tortillion did. Okay, 
so I've got my darkest, I've got my light, and you can see the transition between all of them. So there's our basic value scale. So the idea behind doing this on your paper is when I create this drawing, I'm gonna be looking for each and every one of these seven within my piece to dictate um, that the drawing has a complete value study. So it's going through each of these phases. And um, if you're doing that, you constantly have a reference that you can keep looking back and forth and making sure that it's hitting the darks and hitting the lights. It's really common for a lot of people not to go super dark right off the bat because they're worried about it. But if you sketch out your image, you know exactly where your darkest color is, then you can actually start at the dark and work your way back. Um, and that's a good way to start practicing, pushing in a lot of the shades that a lot of people are missing. Um, that's not necessarily how I draw all the time because I too wanna make sure I have the ability to go up and down um, with my colors. But when you're doing a value study, we know we're gonna include all seven. So if you start there and work your way back, um, it's actually a little easier to complete the study knowing that you're getting your darkest of your dark. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cut over to the next scene where we'll start drawing the image you're gonna be working on. Okay, so the value study you're gonna be working on is just drawing a basic mug. Um, I chose a mug because the handle's gonna create some different variation. Um, this one is a ceramic one, so um, I'm not gonna be drawing the label or really the color variation, just the shape and the light um, bouncing off of it. Um, don't choose a glass one because we're not gonna get into the see-through aspect of it. Um, I did also choose one that's got a little bit of a bevel here, so it's got a little more shape than just straight down. Um, so this is the image I draw. I'm gonna be drawing it this way as if it's floating on the table here. I'm gonna start with the shape of the top. So we're looking at this in perspective. So you're gonna have an oval shape like you're looking across it. This line comes down. The bevel comes across. This is gonna be sitting and rounded because it's, again, in perspective to have that 3D effect. Um, in this particular one, the handle out and around. And I'll fix this up once I, I'm having some trouble sketching today, I guess. That's okay, we'll fix that up. All right, so there's the basic shape of that. Um, I'm also gonna add in my table behind it take a ruler. This I'm just drawing randomly. I'm not actually looking at the uh, object itself for this just because the table I'm using is quite large. So my background would be much higher than it is. I want it to be like it's sort of on the edge of the table. And then uh, for me, the light source is coming from this angle down and shooting across. So that means the shadow that's being cast for me is coming across through here. There's my shadow, which means all my lights, my light source. So this is my light source. It's coming across here, so this can be my lightest side, darkest side through here. Same thing, the light's bouncing off here a little bit in there, and then you've got your shadow there. Um, so this is what we're gonna be starting with. Oh, let me put the rim of this. I want this to look like it's more than just a paper folded up. It's gotta have some depth. So there's our top of the cup there, which has a slight curve to it. Okay, so why don't you sketch that out and then we'll go to the next step where you're gonna start filling this in. Okay, so I'm gonna start uh, showing you some of the shading on this mug here, um, using again, the light source on this side. Our shadow is gonna be cast over here um, and the reverse in the inside. So I'm actually gonna start on the inner part because I'm right-handed, so I like to be able to move right and left. And we talked a little bit about working for my dark silver. So it's gonna be dark in here because this is the shadow being cast. And then sort of as you work your way out, you do sort of want a crisp line so you can tell that it's different than the lid. So it's still gonna be um, dark because it is the inside of something. And then this makes a dark line across. And then it's gonna be darker towards the bottom. And I'll 
not really pull out the difference between the two. All right, and then the top of our mug. Just gonna add a decent color to it. Lots of variation as we go. Okay, so this side of the mug is gonna be fairly light. I'm gonna just start with a base of color here using the blending stump. And then this side is going to be my darker. Eventually all of these pencil lines are gonna be gone, but this is just the fastest way for me to lay down some color. I'm just gonna just crisscross, bring some color over. Okay, now we're gonna go darker. I'm gonna worry about the handle later, making that look like it falls in. So this side is going to be the darkest out of all of it. I'm gonna keep working on this and I'm just gonna fast forward through this part and then I'll show you the next two areas, okay? Okay, so I could keep spending a lot of time making this perfect, but for the purposes of this video, um, you can tell that it's got the cylinder shape now, this light source. We do want to erase out a little bit of the light source here, so I'm just gonna get rid of some of the pigment from there. And it'll start to look like it's got a shiny surface, so some sort of reflection going on there. It'll also get a reflection from the table and a back reflection. So when the light hits the back of the table, it's gonna shoot up and actually leave a small mark on the other side, which a lot of people usually miss when they do this. And then to show this is actually on the table here, it's gonna be very, very dark right underneath it, especially on the side away from the sun or the light source. And it's gonna slowly ombre
of smooth this out at the end with my hand. got some of this pigment really on there I'm gonna go back against the table so yeah just by adding a little shadow on the wall it's gonna bring that table forward so towards us okay and next I'm going to work on the handle so again the darker side up through there to catch a little bit of light on the surface of this Also gonna help it look a little more 3D. This would be the darker part of that. A nice crisp edge helps. I have to erase some of the pencil out. We a shadow too here from where it connects because our light source, where the handle is positioned here, or directly across. Top, which is actually going to be brighter. Not the curve. Same thing, we're gonna get a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm just looking at the mug and sort of picking up all the different spots. Okay, so that was a quick like 10 minute example of what the mug is supposed to look like. Um, yours will be a lot smoother and hopefully a little more well rendered because you're gonna be spending a little bit more time on it. Um, but that's a basic value study. So what we're looking for is the darks. You can notice they match here. And I've got my next tone matches there, next tone in there, and work your way down. Um, so my lightest, I don't actually have any stark white on here with the exception of these little tiny highlights there. Um, but that's what really makes everything stand out is going from that to that in just one little area is going to help um, the appearance of depth in your drawing. Um, so good luck. Um, hopefully it goes well for you and I uh, can't wait to see them.